good afternoon and uh, in this uh, video we will talk about idoc processing so a lot of people wanted to understand how do we process idoc idoc means intermediate document and sap we will talk about some of the transaction code which are important transaction code in sap which is we02 we05 and we20 we19 and bd87 so these are some of the important transaction code which are there in sap we02 we05 we19 we20 and bd87 so these are some of the important transaction codes then we'll talk about how do we do the intermediate processing so what is edi i i have all that uh, one video uh, already in sap so i have already one video this is more focused around inbound and outbound processing of ido so that is what in this video i wanted to focus so we we have something called intermediate document then we have something called outbound uh, processing so there is inbound idoc processing there is outbound idoc processing so we will talk about both inbound basically means when edi is coming in so when edi coming in it created inbound idoc so how do we search the idoc so how do we select the idoc so in order to select idoc there is a transaction code w02 and then there is a transaction code w05 so if i go back and type here we02 when i go to w02 and we get a idoc list in the idoc list we can put a date from this date to this date and then there are different uh, idoc types we want uh, directions whether we want uh, inbound idoc or outbound idoc so whether idoc coming in or idoc going out so we can select that uh, we can select by idoc type we can select what type of idoc it is which partner it is so which customer it is so partner basically means customer vendor supplier bank etc so i select my partner so this is my customer so 19171001 this is my customer number then here i can put my um, date so between this date and this date i can put a date and i can hit execute so here if we see then there are inbound idoc and outbound idoc so primarily all idocs are divided into two categories idocs which is going out and the idocs which are coming in so inbound idoc is the idoc which is coming in and outbound idoc which is going out so first let's look at the inbound idoc so here we have something called orders okay. orders basically means purchase order which is coming in so here we have a different statuses so this is status 64 which basically means ready to process but is not being processed 53 basically means green which has been processed successfully means for that those idoc came and they have been processed successfully so corresponding sales order etc has been created so that is what we see here the status so this is a if we click on the bottom so if you see here idoc 215753 application document posted and the order number 3166 has been created so this is basically the document 3166 which has been created so we can see that that document number which has been created and this is the document which has been processed idoc number 51 so these 51 are the where was some kind of error so if you go to 51 and these are the error 
these are the idoc which has some kind of error whatever that error is so we'll see the red color that basically will not post a transaction terminated by user and uh, current uh, transaction was reset so you will click on it you will see the error so the this error is that material uh, 211006 not defined for the sales organization so and so so and so so and so so that basically means we can see that error messages and uh, which is there for every kind of item so we can see what what went wrong with that item <clears throat> there we have 53 here now in the 53 which are the successful so let us say i look at the one and uh, there was a uh, uh, so there was this idoc 21753 and then we see this order has been created so i select this order 217573 this is successful idoc so that is the reason i'm selecting this successful idoc now i want to process this idoc so we go to we19 so we have seen the transition code we 19. If you go to W19 and I put here IDOC and I hit enter and hit execute. So there is an execute button here so you can execute. Now here one thing which you can do we can see all the different segments. So this, these are the different segments and each of these segments has a different value. If you click on it you will see certain value. If you click on it you will see certain value so here in this idoc you will see this uh, message type is this uh, part number is this ls so there is a uh, and it going to the part number ku means customer type now and then each of this idoc has a different value so if in this value if you want to overwrite it you can overwrite also it is changeable let us say i want to process this idoc Okay, so here we have this button called standard inbound. If I click on this standard inbound, so you say this is my customer number, this is my customer, this is inbound purchase order, process code, is, this is the program in the back, there's the function module which will trigger, and I say hit enter. So it goes into circle because it is processing the IDOC. So now we get a message that IDOC number 215762 was created. So system, when process an order, it also created new IDOC also. So this IDOC has been created. So we select that here and I select the IDOC, we cancel, go back and this is the IDOC number comes here also. So we can select the IDOC. Now after the IDOC has been created. Now I want to see the status of this IDOC. I go to W02. And here I do put my IDOC number, which just got created. And I hit execute button, which is in the bottom. <clears throat> now in this IDOC, we have a status 53 and I have a green light. Green light basically means application document posted. That basically means for this IDOC, we are able to create a I sales order. Okay. Then you have a basic type, then you have a extension, etc. And then <clears throat> and if I go back, go to the status here, application posted. And if you see that here, system tells me the order number 3172 created. So 3172 is the sales order number which has been created. 3172. So for this IDOC 215762, sales order number 3172 has been created. Okay. Now, if let us say I want to um, check this sales order. So, so let's say I want to go to VA02 and uh, I have the sales order number here 3172. 
3172. 3172 is a sales order number which has been created. 3172 sales order number has been created. Now here we can see the sales order. So this is the sales order number which has been created automatically. So now we understand, we learn that a sales order has been created automatically. In the sales order, if I want to make it any change, any uh, data, I can enter any other data here. I try to save it. Say some say the sales order is incomplete. I say add it. And then I can, there is some uh, customer expected price, which is not there. So there is some, whatever the data is missing, you can enter the data. So it is uh, $100. Okay. So go back. And then we try to save it, edit. and we still have a problem. So we go back here, we go to complete data. So now here, the problem is customer expected price is not there. So we need go back here. So we have a customer expected price and then we can enter here and customer expected and I enter some amount. Back. Now this error is gone. <clears throat> this error normally comes when you're posting a sales order with reference to EDI system checks that uh, price which is coming in the EDI and uh, price which is basically coming from customer and the internally determined price they are matching or they are not matching. And then we save it. Authorization problem. 94 requested okay so there is a difference in the amount okay so now we go back here in the sales order to be a zero two and here if in this sales order if i want to make some changes i can make changes well this is a three quantity i make it two i have a seven quantity i make it two or three or whatever so that basically means when the sales order has been posted you can always make a change to that sales order. So what we did, and then there is a expected price error again because we change the quantity, so the price get changed. We will change that price again. So here, because these are the manual changes which when the system created. So here we have um, eighteen dollars. Then here we have a total $27 and come back. Now we got a message, document is complete and we save it. So that basically means we had an IDOC, okay? And uh, we were, so, Sales order number. So review the inbound IDOC, process IDOC, review document. So that basically means sales order number. Sales order number 307 has been posted automatically automatically using IDOC
So here we have I dot number this 215762. Okay, so here we can put. 215762. With this IDOC, we are able to process this sales order and we are able to process. Now, in this sales order, also, if I go to sales order, so this sales order, and if you go here, if you see my cursor on the top, there is something called relationship. Right? If you go to this relationship here, and here also, you will see that. 3172, this sales order, there was inbound IDOC, and this IDOC number was this. And IDOC number 21576 message that this was posted on date so and so, time so and so. So that basically means that in case of <clears throat> inbound in the sales order, I can check IDOC. In IDOC, I can see sales order. So you can do both. So that basically means. In IDOC, we can see sales order number. And in sales order, we can see IDOC. We can do both. So both processing are possible okay inbound and outbound now this is what we have done now we want to understand that how do we trigger so we have done this so far all the thing related to inbound data now we talk about outbound idoc processing how do we trigger an idoc outbound okay so how do we trigger an idoc from sap that is what we are trying to understand so I go back to the sales order. Okay. So here, this is sales order. So first and foremost, I outbound, outbound IDOC is triggered, triggered using, using output determination concept now i have a separate video for output determination that also you can watch for more detail so so how do we take the up we trigger IDOC in case of so by using output <coughs> using output determination how do we do that so if this is the same sort in the sales order, if you go back here and then bottom, more, if you go to extras, and if you go to output, this is the header, there is an edit. So if you go to edit here, okay. So in this edit, we can go to output type. Now these are different output types. Now how you can configure new output type, you can do new configuration, output determination, all those things can be done. Now this output determination concept is used many places. This output determination concept is used in sales order, is used in outbound delivery, it is used in customer invoicing, this also used in purchase order, and this output determination concept is used in many, many, many places. Okay. Now it works same way. So the, the same way output determination functioning in sales order and output determination purchasing and purchase order is same. If you understand one place, you can utilize second place. So it's the same concept. Output determination in delivery, outbound delivery, inbound delivery, same. Output determination in transportation document, same. Output determination in customer invoicing, same. So here we have output type, and uh, let us say we got an order, and now because we got an order, we want to send an order confirmation. Okay. So how can we send the order confirmations? So here we select output type. This is EDA confirmation. Media should be six. 
Sixth basically means we want to send EDI. If you want to print it, then you have to select media one number one. If you want to print it, we will select print output. If you are sending EDI, we select six. We are sending to this customer. Now here we have a time one. If I go to further data and I say time equals to four. Four basically means I want to process it automatically, immediately. Then we go back and uh, we have a four. Four basically means you want to process the side of immediately. And then we save it. So LL order 3172 has been saved. We go back. After that, we go to extras. We go to output, header, edit. Now this output has been triggered and there is a green light and it says successfully processed. Successfully processed. If I select here and if you go to processing log, and from here, I can see the IDOC which has been created. So this IDOC 215763 was added and posted. So this IDOC has been created. This is outbound IDOC. So this IDOC has been created automatically using EDI. So we created an IDOC. That IDOC number is this this is the IDOC number using this IDOC number we are able to trigger a new IDOC this is IDOC number we will see this IDOC also so this is IDOC number we close it we close it we close it now if I go to relationship also if you go to relationship here then in the relationship we see an inbound right dog and we say outbound right dog. This was the inbound right dog which was used to create the sales order. And this is the IDOC number 215762. Then outbound IDOC was triggered, and this outbound IDOC number is 215763. This IDOC was ordered, and this is order confirmation. Now if I want to go back in W02 and check this IDOC, I can check there as well. So let's say if we go to W02 and I put my IDOC number and the IDOC number was 63, so this is 63. And then we hit execute button here, 215763. Okay, so this is IDOC which has been Great. This is the IDOC number and this is the information which we see. This is the customer and you can check all the content in the IDOC. So this is the IDOC which has been triggered. So this is how you can utilize inbound IDOC and you can also create outbound dialog. We have, I have taken an example of a sales order. Same can be used in purchase order. Same can be used in inbound delivery. Same can be used in outbound delivery. Same can be used in uh, invoicing. So all different areas and places where you can use IDOC, same processing of the IDOC will apply. So with that, thank you very much.